Honorable Speaker, I present the budget for 2023-2024. This is the first budget in Amrit Khan. This budget hopes to build on the foundation laid in the previous budget and the blueprint drawn for India at 100. We envision a prosperous and inclusive India in which the fruits of development will reach all sections and citizens, especially our youth, women, farmers, OBCs, scheduled castes, and scheduled tribes. In the 75th year of our independence, the world has recognized the Indian economy as a bright star. Our current year's economic growth is estimated to be at 7%. It is notable that this is the highest among all the major economies. This is in spite of the massive slowdown globally caused by COVID-19 and the war. The Indian economy is therefore on the right track and despite a time of challenges, heading towards a bright future. Today, as Indians stand with their head held high and, their world, and the world appreciates India's achievements and successes, we are sure that elders who had fought for India's independence will with joy bless us in our endeavors going forward as well. Our focus on wide-ranging reforms and sound policies implemented through Sabka Prayas resulting in Jan Bagidari and targeted support to those in need helped us perform well in trying times. India's rising global profile is because of the several accomplishments. Unique world-class digital public infrastructure, example, Aadhaar, Coven, and UPI. COVID vaccination drive in unparalleled scale and speed. Proactive role in frontier areas, such as achieving the climate-related goals mission life and national hydrogen mission. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we ensured that no one goes to bed hungry with a scheme to supply free food grains to over 80 crore persons for 28 months. Continuing our commitment to ensure food and nutritional security, we are implementing from 1st January 2023 a scheme to supply free food grain to all Antyodhya and priority households for the next one year under PM Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. The ex entire expenditure, the entire expenditure of about 2 lakh crore will be borne by the central government. In these times of global challenges, the G20 presidency gives us a unique opportunity to strengthen India's role in the world economic order. With the theme of Vasudeva Kutumbaka, we are steering an ambitious people of Vasudeva Kutumbaka to address global challenges and to facilitate sustainable economic development. The government's efforts since 2014 for all citizens a better quality of life and life of dignity. The per capita income has more than doubled to 1.97 lakh rupees. In these nine years, the Indian economy has increased in size from being 10th to 5th largest in the world. We have significantly improved our position as well as a well-governed and innovative country with a conducive environment for business as, as reflected in several global indices. 
We have made a significant progress in many sustainable development goals. The economy has become a lot more formalized as reflected in the EPFO membership more than doubling to 27 crore and rupees 7,400 crore digital payments of 126 lakh crore rupees through UPI in 2022. The efficient implementation of many schemes with universalization of targeted benefits has resulted in inclusive development. Some of the schemes are 11.7 crore household toilets under Swachh Bharat Mission, which is achieved. 9.6 crore LPG connections under Ujwala. 220 crore COVID vaccination of 102 crore people, persons. 47.8 crore PM Jandan bank accounts. Insurance cover for 44.6 crore persons under PM Suraksha Bhima and PM Jeevan Jyoti Yojana and crash tra cash transfer of 2.2 lakh crores of rupees to 11.4 crore to over 11.4 crore farmers under PM Kisan Samman Nidhi. Our vision for the Amritkal includes technology-driven and knowledge-based economy with strong public finances and a robust financial sector. To achieve this, Jan Bhagidari through Sapka Saad, Sapka Prayas is essential. The economic agenda for achieving this vision focuses on three things. First, facilitating ample opportunities and job creation. First, facilitating ample opportunities for citizens, especially the youth, to fulfill their aspirations. Second, providing strong impetus to growth and job creation. And third, strengthening macroeconomic stability. To service these focus areas in our journey to India at 100, we believe that the following four opportunities can be transformative during Amritkal. Economic empowerment of women. Deendayal Antyodhya Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission has achieved remarkable success by mobilizing rural women into 81 lakh self-help groups. We will enable these groups to reach the next stage of economic empowerment through formation of large producer enterprises or collectives, with each having several thousand members and managed professionally. They will be helped with raw materials supply and for better design, quality, branding, and marketing of their products. Through supporting these policies, they will be enabled to scale up their operations to serve the large consumer markets, as has been the case with the several startup people who work with their hands using tools, have brought renown for India. They're generally referred to as Vishwakarma. The art and the handicraft created by them represents the true spirit of Atmanirbhar Bharat. For the first time, a package of assistance for them has been conceptualized. The new scheme will enable them to improve the quality, scale, and reach of their products, integrating them with the MSME value chain. The components of this scheme will include not only financial support, but also access to advanced skill training, knowledge of modern digital techniques, and efficient green technologies, brand promotion, linkage with local and global markets, digital payments, and social security. This will greatly benefit the scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, OBCs, women, and people belonging to the weaker sections. 
tourism, the country offers immense attraction for domestic as well as foreign tourists. There is a large potential to be tapped in tourism. The sector holds huge opportunities for jobs and entrepreneurship for youth in particular. Promotion of tourism will be taken up on mission mode with active participation of states, convergence of government programs, and public-private partnerships. Green growth. We are implementing many programs for green fuel, green energy, green farming, green mobility, green buildings, and green equipment, and policies for efficient use of energy across various economic sectors. These green growth efforts help in reducing carbon intensity of the economy and provides for large-scale green job opportunities. Priorities of this budget. The budget adopts the following seven priorities. They, comp they complement each other and act as the Saptarishi guiding us through the Amritkal. Inclusive development, reaching the last mile, infrastructure and investment, unleashing the potential, green growth, youth power, and financial sector. I now speak on the priority number one, inclusive development. The government's philosophy of Sapka Saat, Sapka Vikas has facilitated inclusive development covering in specific Farmers, women, youth, OBCs, scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, divyangjan, and economically weaker sections, and overall priority for the underprivileged, vanchitongko variyata. There has also been a sustained focus on Jammu Kashmir, Ladakh, and the Northeast. This budget builds on those efforts. Digital public infrastructure for agriculture. Digital public infrastructure for agriculture will be built as an open source, open standard, and interoperable public good. This will enable inclusive farmer-centric solutions through relevant information services for crop planning and health, improved access to farm inputs, credit and insurance, help for crop estimation, market intelligence, and support for growth of agri-tech industry and startups. An, agricultural, an agriculture accelerator fund, an agriculture accelerator fund will be set up to encourage agri-startups by young entrepreneurs in rural areas, the fund will aim at bringing innovative and affordable solutions for challenges faced by farmers. It will also bring in modern technologies to transform agricultural practices, increase productivity and profitability. To enhance the productivity of extra long staple cotton, we will adopt a cluster-based and value chain approach through public-private partnerships. This will mean collaboration between farmers, state, and industry for input supplies, extension services, and market linkages. We will launch an Atmanirbhar clean plant program to boost availability of disease-free quality planting material for high-value horticultural crops at an outlay of 2,200 crores. Global hub for millets, millets which are Sri Anna. India is the forefront. India is at the forefront of popularizing millets, whose consumption further nutri furthers nutrition, food security, and welfare of farmers said the Honorable Prime Minister. We are the largest producer and second largest exporter 
of Sri Anna in the world. We grow several types of Sri Anna, <laughs> such as Sri Anna Jowar, Sri Anna Ragi, Sri Anna Bajra, Sri Anna Kutu, Ramdana, Kangani, Kutni, Kutki, Kodo, China, and Sama. These have a number of health benefits and have been an integral part of our food for centuries. I acknowledge with pride the huge service done by small farmers in contributing to the health of fellow citizens by growing these Sri Anna. Now to make India a global hub for Sri Anna, the Indian Institute of Millet Research, ideally Indian Institute of the Sri Anna Research, Hyderabad will be supported as the center of excellence for sharing best practices, research, and technologies at the international level. The agricultural credit target will be increased to 20 lakh crores with focus on animal husbandry, dairy, and fisheries. We will launch a new sub-scheme for of PM Matsya Sampada Yojana, which is an existing scheme, but we launch a new sub-scheme with targeted investment of 6,000 crores to further enable activities of fishermen, fish vendors, and micro and small entrepreneurs, improve value chain efficiencies, and expand the market. For farmers, especially small and marginal farmers, and other marginalized sections. The government is promoting cooperative-based economic development model. A new Ministry of Cooperation was formed with a mandate to realize the vision of Sahekar Se Samriddhi. To realize this vision, the government has already initiated comp computerization of 63,000 primary agricultural credit societies with an investment of 2,560 crores, 2,516 crores. In consultation with all the stakeholders and the states, model bylaws for PACS were formulated, enabling them to become multi-purpose PACS. A national cooperative database is being prepared for countrywide mapping of cooperative societies. With this backdrop, we will implement a plan to set up massive decentralized storage capacity. This will help farmers store their produce and realize remunerative prices through sale at appropriate times. The government will also facilitate setting up of a large number of multi-purpose cooperative societies, primary fishery societies, and dairy cooperative societies in uncovered panchayat and villages in the next five years. <laughs> Health, education, and skilling. 157 new nursing colleges will be established in co-location in co-location with the existing 157 medical colleges established since 2014. A mission to eliminate sickle cell anemia by 2047 will be launched. It will entail awareness creation, universal screening of seven crore people in the age group of zero to 40 years in affected tribal areas and counseling through collaborative efforts of central ministries and state governments. Facilities in select ICMR labs, Indian Council for Medical Research Labs, will be made available for research 
by public and private medical college faculty and private sector R&D teams for encouraging collaborative research and innovation. A new pharma program, a new program to promote research and innovation in pharmaceuticals will be taken up through centers of excellence. We shall also encourage industry to invest in research and development in specific priority areas. Dedicated multidisciplinary courses for medical devices will be supported in existing institutions to ensure availability of skilled manpower for futuri futuristic medical technologies, high-end manufacturing and research. Teachers training. Teachers training will be re-envisioned through innovative pedagogy, curriculum transaction, continuous professional development, dipstick surveys, and ICT implementation. The District Institute of Education and Training will be developed as vibrant institutes of excellence for this purpose. National Digital Library for Children and Adolescents. A National Digital Library for Children and Adolescents will be set up for facilitating availability of quality books across geographies, languages, genres, and levels, and device agnostic accessibility. States will be encouraged to set up physical libraries for them at panchayat and ward levels, and provide infrastructure for accessing the National Digital Library resources. Additionally, to build a culture of reading and to make up for pandemic time learning loss, the National Book Trust, the Children's Book Trust, and other sources will be encouraged to provide and replenish non-curricular titles in regional languages and in English to these physical libraries. Collaboration with NGOs that work in literacy will also be a part of this initiative to inculcate financial literacy, financial sector regulators and organizations will be encouraged to provide age-appropriate reading material to these libraries. I move to priority two, reaching the last mile. Prime Minister Vajpayee's government had formed the Ministry of Tribal Affairs and the Department of Development of Northeast Region to provide a sharper focus to the objective of reaching the last mile. Our government has formed the ministries of Ayush, Fisheries, Animal Husbandry, and Dairying, Skill Development, Jal Shakti, and Cooperation. Building on the success of the Aspirational Districts Program, the government has recently launched the Aspirational Blocks Program, covering 500 blocks for saturation of essential government services across multiple domains, such as health, nutrition, education, agriculture, water resources, financial inclusion, skill development, and basic infrastructure. <coughs> Manya Speaker, sir, Pradhan Mantri PBTG, which is Primitive Vulnerable Tribal Groups Development Mission, is being launched. <laughs> to improve socioeconomic conditions of the particularly vulnerable tribal groups, the PBTGs, as we refer them to, Pradhan Mantri PBTG Development Mission will be launched 